It's our fourth and final episode of Sabres Draft Coverage presented by Seneca Resorts and Casinos. We are still in the Seneca Sports Lounge and with all apologies, or maybe just don't tell Peters, Morial, and Pronman, we saved the best for last at Sam Cosentino with his sleepers as we always get into. Uh, Sam, of course, from Sportsnet. Sammy, great to have you with us. Uh, how has it been this entire year of trying to scout from your vantage point? You're bringing the heat, man. Peter's like unbelievable. Pronman, unreal. Morial, like holy geez, you shouldn't have told me that. I'm so rattled right now. But uh, you know what? It's 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 been challenging, like for me especially because I wasn't allowed to travel at all. Um, I I made an attempt and a pitch to try and get to the under 18s, and I thought I might be able to kind of do a cram session there and get all my homework done there. That wasn't allowed. So by hook or by crook, I watched uh, as many games as I possibly could, either through um, the network here or, or on uh, on hockey TV. So it's never as good as being there. Uh, but when you're, you know, those are the circumstances that are presented. So as is in life, you can only control what you can control. And me not being allowed to go was was something I couldn't control. So I just did the, did the best I could from here. Sammy, let's dive into a first name on perhaps your sleeper list and give us an idea what you know of Olivier Nadeau and where he might fall. Yeah, big guy, Shawin again, uh, competed for a gold medal and won it with Quebec at the Canada Winter Games a couple of years ago. So sometimes I find these Q first rounders get uh, left in the dust a little bit and I'm here to give them a little love and I think Nadeau at 6'2", 205 pounds is a guy that uh, just added massive points, uh, 45 of them in 34 games this year with Shawin again. And... I think the fact that he was playing with Maverick Bork's already been drafted, Ponomarev's been drafted, everyone's looking at Bork go, so I think he's going to get a little love as a result of that. Sam, before I move into my next player, did you have more conversation with teams and scouts this year because you weren't able to be there in person? Yeah, for sure. You want to try and um, supplement with whatever you're seeing and try and corroborate with whatever you're seeing. So it's texts, it's emails, it's trying to look for guys who – uh, you know, maybe are on the on the fringes or didn't have contracts and seeing if they were familiar with some of the guys based on the year before. So you try and do as much as that as, as possible. You want to make sure you get a good look with your own eyes before you start leaning on those other resources. So no question that's a big part of it. It always has and will continue to be right up until draft day. Okay, how about Riley Kidney? What do you, can you tell about uh, this player and uh, where will he fit if it's uh, later in the draft? Yeah, so he's a smaller guy, he's a slippery guy, he's got good hands, really good playmaker. But another guy who had massive uh, increase in point totals playing up in Bathurst, another guy by the name of Cole Huckins alongside him might be one of those sleeper guys too, he's a bigger scorer type of guy. But Kidney's probably more of a, a middle range guy. Had an unbelievable second half, if you will, as you know, if you can cut the season in half in the Quebec League. But really, absolutely brilliant in the playoffs. So again, a, a guy whose work ethic is really good, his hands, his playmaking vision. Uh, are that of someone that you might take a chance on in, in the latter stages. How do you assess guys that have zero games played? Chandler Romeo, where, where does he fit? <laughs> yeah, so third round pick for Hamilton. He's a 6'5", left shooting D at around 205 pounds. So when those guys can skate and move well, automatically they're going to jump on the radar. Where he made his mark is uh, because Hamilton didn't really have room for him last two years ago, I guess. He played junior B. Performed well there at about a half point per game. Then got about a 10-game uh, stint in Tier 2. Performed well there, but uh, I deked a few people out, got to a few private skates and got to see this guy. And so uh, I kind of have a sneaking suspicion that he's also a guy that, that's probably going to go in the mid to late rounds. He played in that PBHH tournament in Erie, and I think he turned some eyebrows there. A simple guy, get the puck into the forward's hands. You know, I'd like to see him defend with a little bit more jam, but because of his size and the skating ability, I think someone will take him. So a challenge is to select players that haven't played any games. How about goaltenders? There may be a couple of goaltenders early in the draft, but somebody late in the draft, maybe Tristan Lennox? Yeah, so he's a guy who's got some experience internationally. He's a late birthday, so he is helped by that, that he was able to get games, uh, you know, basically for a year and a half. I loved his 16-year-old year. He had a real tail off in his second year and maybe started thinking about things in the draft. And maybe it was the fact that he was leaned on a little more. I think it was the unexpected guy at 16. So in that situation, you don't feel the kind of pressure. But when you become the guy and the heat's on, things turn around a little bit. So his 18-19 wasn't great. But again, another guy with size who, who plays the position well, who has some currency as a silver medalist at the Halenka, 
played in the under 17s. So there are people that know about him and those additional looks in international play, I think give guys a leg up, but he's a late birthday guy. And, and again, uh, he's not going to be left off the, off the map because he's a smaller goaltender. He's still a guy with size. So that opens up the range of 32 as opposed to, Hey, there's a lot of teams, Marty, as you know, who are out there saying, unless he's 6'2", as a goalie, forget it, we're not looking. He satisfies the, the size requirement for all 32 teams. All right, last one. And this is interesting because, of course, Dylan Cousins was starring in Lethbridge while this guy was there too. Justin Hall, what's his story and do you think he'll be taken? Yeah, he's a really interesting guy and a guy that, uh, quite honestly, I didn't know a lot about. I've done a little bit of work on him, but he seems to be the, the guy who has that knack and the ability to score goals. And Anytime you have that, especially in even strength situations, it's the toughest thing to do. So you can be a great playmaker, great vision, have good hands, you know, dizzy people with all of your moves. But unless you're getting it to the back of the net, hey, it doesn't really matter. So that skill tends to be a little bit more coveted than the guy who's the playmaker. I think Hall's a guy who can do that on a regular basis. And I think he proved that in Lethbridge this year. And again, because he had the opportunity to play in a certain amount of games, this year in the Western Hockey League has a bit of currency from the year previous. Maybe that makes him as a, as a late round flyer type of guy. All right, Sammy, great stuff as always. Tell us in your words what you think in the entirety of this draft. How would you describe it? Chaos, random, craziness, all of those things that I think once we get outside of the top 10 is going to be completely all over the map. There's going to be some prizes, some surprises. I'm already worrying about what's going to happen on TV here when the next Chinikov goes like he did from Columbus last year. Uh, I think we're going to see a few of those this year, so I'm trying to prepare a little better and extend that list a little bit. But I really believe, and I honestly believe this, you're going to see re-entry guys being taken more often. You're going to see analytics and video obviously play a bigger part. You're going to see a more wide range of people being able to be on the conversation because everyone can watch video. And then you're going to have some people who I think that are taken late who might surpass people that are taken early. But I do believe in the top 10, I'd be happy to be picking there. Outside of that, I'm open for business to say, hey, you want to move the pick? You want to move up, down? You want to acquire more picks? Want to defer those picks to 2022 or 2023? I, as a GM, would be all open for that. Great stuff, as always, Sam. The energy and the insight. We look forward to your draft coverage. All right, thanks, guys. Take care. Sam Cosentino from Rogers Sportsnet. That concludes our draft coverage leading up to the big event from here at the Seneca Sports Lounge. It is Sabres draft coverage presented by Seneca Resorts and Casinos.